do you vertically set up these product teams with UX, engineering, and product, or kind of have the horizontal product design? Um, I'll start. Just a truism I've observed. That there, there is no such thing as the perfect org chart. Um, and there are some classic models of either being functionally based, so you've got the, the vertical functions of engineering and product and sales, or there are um, uh, product unit, business unit structures that have the product business unit first and then they have those functions underneath. And whichever model, you, there isn't a right answer between the two. Um, whichever model you do, you, wherever you have the seams, are where you have the problems that you need to manage. And that's really the role of management and leadership to fix, <laughs> fix those. You also tend to see a uh, dynamic in many organizations that there's a periodic swing between the two of you are having problems in the one model, so you are having problems with the, uh, uh, the business units being too siloed, so you swing towards a functional model, and you do that for a couple of years, and then uh, it's too hard to get things done horizontally, so then it swings back the other direction. Um, there's a natural rhythm. <laughs> I, when it, when it, go ahead. I was going to say, I think that uh, you just have to be, uh, kind of like Jeff said, they both have their own upsides and downsides. So first, you have to think about what problem you're trying to, like what is the most painful thing for you right now and that would be the highest leverage you solve and then organize around that one and maybe in two years it'll be different. <laughs> and then the other thing is really spend a bunch of energy in addressing the known cons of whichever option you choose. So we happen to be organized functionally. And so we do a bunch of things to try to minimize that. So we'll make teams sit next to, even though you report functionally, you sit around the same table. Because I think a team is defined much more about uh, by how they sit, like where they sit, than how many different managers they have. So we do that. And then we also pair up engineering and product leaders one to one. And we have sort of simple but silly rules. So you know, if I go email a team on the consumer side, I'll email both. Uh, the engineering and the product leader. And if I'm asking a question, I'll CC Kevin, who is my, my counterpart. He runs all the product at the company. And there's simple things like that. And I'm never allowed to complain about Kevin for being the stupid product guy. And he's, to my knowledge, at least, <laughs> never, allowed, never allowed to complain about me. Like we, we have, it's, our, it's our joint problem. And we try to push that, that culture recursively to all the teams. But you know, that's because we're intentionally trying to address the issues of the functional model we've chosen. If you do the other thing, you know, you have consistency problems, then you probably have to pour intentional energy into addressing those. Yeah, and I'll expose one of my biases, which is um, I, I do personally prefer the functional model, uh, and Google uh, pushed the functional model just about as far as it possibly could. Um, I think there's a lot of benefits for the functional model, uh, <clears throat> but then, you know, ultimately about three years ago, Google moved to more of a, a, a product unit oriented, product area model. Um, that said, it was you know, 25,000 people and mm -hmm. you know, billions of dollars in revenues before it got pushed there. So, so one thing we were trying to solve, and the reason we're functional is engineering consistency. And we don't have the as strong a culture of exactly one way to do every single Having worked in the Google stack for years and years, that is the case, that there's exactly one way to do every single thing. And you can boot up any binary. And it's very easy to work on a different uh, team's binary. And so we didn't have that. And we want to get closer to that, which is why. We chose the functional model, and it sounds, I left, I left Google before they went to the business unit model, but it seems like having that base of a culture has probably helped you guys. Even and and having that architectural foundation, certainly, yes. Right. I, think I, I agree with everything, everything <laughs> that I heard there. They just said it probably better than I could. Um, I, I think maybe the, the one thing I'd add, I've, like, I've lived in both of those worlds, like um, functional or like sort of GM model or whatever you want to call the other one. Um, now that you observe, about every two years it was a different. Yeah, and <laughs> and like it's it's because of all the pros and cons that are uh, that are on both sides. Organizations tend to swing and like try try different things over time. I think that maybe the one point I'd add is I don't think that's always unhealthy. Like I think people always think that when you restructure a company or like organize a different way that it's like oh no it's another reorg or whatever, but. I actually don't, I'm not sure that that's always unhealthy. I think sometimes it redraws lines of communication in a team that actually gets people who wouldn't normally talk to each other talking to each other. And doing that, like, you know, if that happens, you know, two years into one model and then two years later, like, you know, nobody likes a, a big reorg. I'm, you know, there's pros and cons on both sides, but it can actually kind of help fuel a little bit more co uh, communication in the company.